In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Well, I'm going to kind of jumble some stuff up here in this video and um, uh, kind of mix some things in, try to make it a little fun, but at the same time cover a serious topic and one that I've talked about before. And that is the topic of falling seers, failed seers, false seers, um, you know, messages upon messages upon messages. Now, I, I will say that in, in the last few weeks, um, I've not been on the internet at all. I've not watched any news. I've not seen any TV. I've not read any articles. Um, I pretty much kind of stayed to myself. So there, you know, I will say that the, the one video that I did on the false doctrine thing, <laughs> that's gotten me in more trouble than any of them. Um, you know, they're just, they come out of the woodworks with these crazy attacks and things like that. So I just kind of shut that down and left it. <laughs> I think it's one of the reasons I was never supposed to get involved in apologetics. But anyway, that being said, um, I want to reemphasize this point about not listening to, um, to messages and uh, to, to the extent that where you're spending the majority of your time or I'm spending the majority or anybody spending the majority of their time um, reading these messages on the internet and, um, and believing all of them, for one. For another, it's, it, it can become, as I've said before, an absolute distraction, okay? I think the times that we're living in are pretty clear. Um, they are to me, and I know that they are to a number of other people, and, and a number of those other people are priests. And um, it, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. There is nothing more important than we can do than to every day do an interior self-examination of conscience and try to become more holy. And that becomes through prayer. It comes through receiving the sacraments. It comes through reflection, reading the scriptures, fasting, praying the rosary. That's the way these things happen because inevitably the virtues that we need are gifts that are given by God. Uh, you know, wisdom, purity, um, fortitude, understanding, perseverance, these are all gifts that are given by God uh, as graces. And those graces are given when we pray, when we're praying, when we're not on the internet reading about all these things. So as I said, I haven't, I haven't been on the internet or even watched any TV or paid any attention to news um, very much at all. You know, I was very busy um, the, the weeks leading up to Easter and, uh, and through the Novena of Divine Mercy, I was very busy doing a lot of ministry and, um, and I just wanted to take time to really um, experience the, the season, uh, you know, of, of Easter and the feast days of, you know, Easter and Divine Mercy and, and you know, go through Lent. Um, I did speak a, a little bit on this at the Spiritual Warfare Conference that was held in Palo Alto. And it was in the second talk that I, unfortunately I was not able to record and I'm not going to be able to post, but I spoke about this because um, it can become a distraction. And even if it's good, it can become a distraction. And so the main thing that we need to focus on is personal holiness. And um, that comes through prayer because that's when graces are given. That's when the things that we need um, to become more holy are given. It's when we're focused on Jesus, when we're praying, when we're asking Our Lady for intercession, when we're praying the rosary for the world. You know, I've said before and I'll say again that, uh, that we have been given everything we need. We've been given all the instruction we need. We don't need to know what's happening tomorrow or what's going to happen or may happen next month or next year or the year after that. Everything has already been revealed. It is in Scripture and uh, it has been given through messages like Fatima and the message of divine mercy. And um, the more I look into the writings of Luisa Picaretta, you know, it's just, an, it's really, that's really just another step in the same direction. Um, <clears throat> but I will say that um, that is the main thing. That is the main thing to do. And I've said before, you know, it's going to be, um, you're going to see a lot more of this. It's going to increase. And so I, I am going to incorporate some other, other things here that I'm doing. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you my favorite margarita mix. And uh, just, I don't know, just to kind of share with you, I guess. And then also a, a gift that was given to me. I thought it was kind of cool. And um, 
I like, you know, most of you guys know that have been watching this channel, I like Star Wars. I love the I lo I, the whole theme of it. It really mirrors kind of what's going on today, you know, with the dark side and the empire and, <laughs> you know, the, the, the mystic, uh, you know, the authentic mystics and, and that kind of thing. And, uh, and the, you know, the holy priests being the, the good guys, you know, the rebellion, if you will. So um, I want to read a little bit of scripture to you. And then I kind of want to point out some of the things to watch for or red flags to watch for that will give away um, false seers. Okay. And then, um, and then I'll share a little bit with you uh, a little, a, a little more about that with you. Um, but I'm going to read from, this is, comes from the gospel of Matthew and, uh, right from Jesus himself. Okay. And it is Matthew 24, starting at verse 10. He says, and then many will be led into sin. They will betray and hate one another. Many false prophets will arise and deceive many. And because the increase of evil doing, the love of many will grow cold, but the one who perseveres to the end will be saved. Now, the important, the most important thing, in, the most important part of that verse is the one who perseveres to the end. <clears throat> and it's the one persevering in love. So the false prophets that he speaks of that deceive many, the love of many will grow cold. Um, they will betray and hate one another. We're already seeing that in the church, which is, again, one of the ways that I've spoke about, I think it was in the last video that I did, it's one of the number one ways to recognize the work of Satan. And I don't care who it's coming from. It, it comes from Catholics. It comes from, you know, people with PhDs that are Catholic. If they're causing division in the church, that is not of the spirit of God. Absolutely, period, end of story. You can disagree with things that you read or things that you hear or disagree with a, um, you know, like with the German bishops, there is a difference between disagreeing and pitting people against each other. There is an absolute difference between that. So anything that causes division in the unity of the body of Christ is not of God, okay? That is the number one way, one of the number one ways to understand this. But to understand that what Jesus said here, the most important thing is part of that verse is the one who perseveres in love. And the way we persevere, the only way that we can persevere in love, and we're not talking about a human love, we're talking about a divine love, not only for God, but for each other. The only way that can happen is as if the Holy Spirit is operating through us. And the only way that can happen is as if we're staying in, in a state of grace, first and foremost, away from mortal sin. Number two, praying, receiving the sacraments, um, and uh, you know, fasting, reading the scriptures. As I've said, every, everything that we need to know has already been given to us, okay? This comes from Romans, and it is chapter 16. I'm gonna start at verse 17. He says, I urge you, brothers, to watch for those who create dissensions and obstacles in opposition to the teaching that you learned. Avoid them, for such people do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites. And by fair and flattering speech, they deceive the hearts of the innocent. And so that's another thing to watch out for. This is where the discernment of spirits comes in, that gift of discernment of spirits. Fair and flattering speech, okay? So the speech sounds real good. The speech sounds real holy. The speech sounds, you know, uh, it tickles your ears. But the fact of the matter is, you can't listen to the way what the way something is said. You have to listen to what is said, okay? I will tell you in my experience, just in the things that I've seen and the things that have been sent to me um, over a period of time, <clears throat> there are a lot of these things that seem to be very, very repetitive to me, okay? So... Um, you know, in the beginning of um, Mejigoria, let's say, and I'm just using this as an example, there was um, my children. That was one of the main things of Our Lady, my children, my dear children. Um, thank you ha for having responded to my call. And then years later, 
you know, um, after I had gone to Medjugorje and, you know, read, read the messages and things like that, years later, I started having things sent to me or things that I would see that were coming from other people um, that were using the exact same language. And that's, again, one of the things to watch for. Another thing to watch for is that you'll hear a, a little tidbit of something in the news, um, and then all of a sudden, you have four or five different people claiming to receive locutions um, that this is coming, or that is coming, or this is gonna happen, and it reflects what you had just heard in the news. Okay, so that's, again, that's one of the things to watch for. You have to pray for the discernment of spirits in order to be able to see these things, okay? Um, and it's really, really important because, again, the, in the times in which we're living, people are, are uh, curious. They want answers. They, they, they want to know what to do. And they make the mistake of running to these places or running to this seer or that seer or listening to this message or listening to that message and begin to ignore what we've already been told to do, okay? And that's pray the rosary, fast, pray the chaplet of divine mercy every day, um, go to confession, read the scriptures, uh, receive communion as often as possible, spend time in adoration, okay? This is, it's nothing new. Every, we have been given everything that we need to know already. We just need to do it. And we need to do it with more, uh, more fervent spirit, more loving spirit towards God. That comes through prayer. And that's when the graces of the Holy Spirit are given. The graces of discernment of spirits, the graces of wisdom, the graces of perseverance. You know, all these virtues, the purity, you know, is a big one. Um, so we need to, that's what we need to really pray for. You know, we, that's what we need to do. And, and I mentioned this at the, at the uh, I don't remember a lot of what I said in the second talk. It just kind of, it just kind of took off on its own. You know, I really wish I could have gotten it recorded, but it was one of the things that I pointed out that, um, that they, people need to stop listening to all of this and stop paying attention to it. And that even if it's good, it can become a distraction. Okay, and, and because then we're not spending the majority of our time um, living in, in the presence of God. We, we are distracted with other things and other voices. Um, the other scriptures I would take, and I, I would just go to Second Peter because he talks about this all over the place um, in his second letter. And uh, you know about scoffers coming at the end of, uh, at the end of the age, um, you know, saying, where is the promise of his coming? Um, in uh, chapter two, starting at 17 also, verse 17, he says, these people are wild of springs and mist driven by gale. For them, the gloom of darkness has been reserved. For talking empty bombast, they seduce with licentious desires of the flesh those who have barely escaped from people who live in error. They promise them freedom, though they themselves are slaves of corruption. And so a lot of times they, what these things do, these, these you know, so-called seers and locutions and that, they're, they're promised a way out or they promise safety or they promise some kind of protection. Um, you know, if you only do this, you won't have to worry about this, that kind of thing. Um, that, th that's exactly what he's talking about here. You know, and so, and so I'm not gonna get into names, you know, I, unless I have to. If it gets to the point to where I feel it gets really bad, um, I will, I will start naming names and I have no problem doing that whatsoever. Um, but that when I got, when I came back, okay, after the, the divine, nurse, divine Mercy Novena, when I came back, uh, the first thing I got onto was, um, there's a couple of different things that I look at every now and then, very rarely, okay? One of them is, is uh, the subscriptions that I have to YouTube and one of them, is uh, a couple of different websites that I read that are Catholic. And um, so Spirit Daily was one that I just, I hadn't been on in a long, long time. And I just happened to, you know, just to see what kind of news was there. And now we have another one in Italy that is, looks like it's not gonna go well. And so I'm not making any judgments on it, but um, 
I will say that, uh, you know, I think you're going to see more of this. I think it's going to happen more often. I think it's going to, you know, we're going to see a lot of, of these people start to be exposed for what they are. And again, I'm not making a judgment on this person, but I can tell you spirit daily, you know, it's a pretty solid source. You know, they don't, they don't get a lot of things wrong. Um, and I will say this, I spoke with, um, this was years ago. Um, I spoke with, uh, oh my gosh, I'm gonna forget his name, Michael Brown. I spoke with Michael Brown's wife over the phone. Um, I don't even know how I got through. I, I think I looked up how to contact or something like that. I didn't get to speak with Michael because he was busy writing, he was working. Um, but I spoke with his wife and I brought up some concerns about a number of different people that, um, that I felt were uh, not, not on the straight and narrow, let's just say that. Um, there were some problems with it. There were some problems with uh, some messages. There were some problems with uh, contradictions, <coughs> excuse me, and things of that nature. This was years ago, and, and all of that's turned out to be true, okay? And so I, it's, I've tried to, to warn people about this. Um, other than what I've said on this channel. And I've done that through email, I've done that through phone call, um, and uh, you know, text messages with certain people that I know. And um, you know, it's been right, it's been proven to be right. And so again, I just wanna make it very clear that, especially to my viewers, because I feel like you guys are family, you know, you've always been here for me. Um, be very, very careful about what you listen to. You know, I would hate for someone to spend years and years listening to one of these, you know, one of these people and invest all that time into listening to them and paying attention and writing it down and, you know, whatever else, studying, whatever they're doing, um, or even spreading it worse, um, only to find out years later that the person was a fraud or the person was, um, you know, mentally ill, or the person was, uh, you know, deceived in some way. And so it just, uh, again, I just wanna reiterate the fact um, and the point not to spend all this time or so much time, okay? I know people are interested. There's just, I think it's a human nature to be interested in these kinds of things. Um, but it's not the most important thing. And we shouldn't be spending the majority of our time doing that, okay? Um, I've said before, and I'll say it again, the mystical experiences and those kinds of things are not what's most important. The most important thing is our faith. That is the most important thing. And uh, we have to have unshakable faith. And the only way you can have unshakable faith and love that perseveres to the end is through divine grace that's given through prayer, through receiving the sacraments, through praying the rosary, through surrender to self, through self-examination of conscience and repentance. The only way those graces are given is by becoming more holy and spending the, major the majority of our time on the internet looking at seers and, and messages and things like that. Um, that's not gonna, it's not gonna do anybody any good. It's not gonna help you grow in holiness, you know? And um, again, there's a fascination with it, but it needs to be, um, it needs to be something that's in check, you know? And so, um, that, that was one of the things I believe I pointed out at the conference as well. You know, the, the mystical experiences, the experiences are one thing. I've recorded all mine. I'm an open book, okay? I didn't ask for any of those. I didn't even know they were coming. They just happened. Um, they are what they are. They've, you know, uh, they've been recorded and I've shared them uh, at the request of priests. And, um, you know, not as, you know, in, in other words, there was nothing wrong with sharing them. There's nothing wrong with doing that. You can believe it. You don't have to believe it. It doesn't really matter to me. Um, one of the things that I will say, um, I, I remember w watching a, a talk that Father Jim did, and he was talking about um, um, God intervening in people's lives, okay, in this way, in this experience of God, in this extraordinary way, okay, like with St. Paul. And one of the things that he pointed out, and I think it's really, really important, was that all through scripture, you will see God appear to man when man is doing what 
man should be doing. Man is, he's working. He's, um, he's taking care of his family. He's out um, shepherding the sheep. And, and over, and I started to think about it, and over and over and over again, this is absolutely true. Um, Moses was shepherding sheep when he saw the burning bush up on the mountain before he went up. Um, you know, uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, Saul was on his way to Damascus when he was hit with the revelation. Um, the shepherds that, that went to the nativity um, they were out shepherding their sheep when the angels appeared. Um, you know, Joseph was, uh, you know, going about his business, ready to, you know, divorce Mary in secret when the angel came to him. And, you know, then he was taking care of Mary when the angel came to him and said to, you know, they had to flee to Egypt. Um, Zechariah was, was uh, serving in the temple when the angel appeared to him. And so, you know, it's, it's absolutely true when I look at this over and over and over again, you know, throughout scripture. And this is, I think it's an absolutely brilliant point that Father brought up because what it does is it kind of brings a, um, it kind of gives you a tool of discernment. And so these people are doing what they normally would do when they're working and then they have these experiences of God. God comes to people when people are doing what they normally do, you know? Um, not when they're on their knees all day out in a field somewhere, you know, before a, a you know, a, a weeping statue, supposedly, okay? And so it's not to say that that doesn't happen, but it's not, biblically, Father's right. It's not the norm. And so I think we need to be careful of that. Um, with that being said, I would also say that there are a number of others. There are about three or four others that I can think of right offhand that I see some problems with. And again, I'm not gonna name names. I'm just gonna sit back and watch because I think they're going to fail too. And um, I'm not making a judgment on this lady out in Italy, okay? But um, it's not, you know, it's not looking good. And so there were a lot of, uh, there was a lot of controversy and, and questions and supporters uh, and then other people that weren't supporters of Maria Divine Mercy, and and look what happened there, you know. And so again, it's a thing to wait for the church, to see what happens. But again, I'm just reiterating the point that you need to be very, very careful about what you're listening to. As I've said before, if it's if it's causing division in the church, it's not from God. If it is, um, if it is bringing you confusion anxiety or fear, that's not from God. Um, you know, it, I mean, even if it, an initial message, okay, I will, I'll, I guess I'd use myself as an example. There were some things that I were shown that really scared me, okay? It brought a lot of fear. It brought a lot of concern, sincere concern for the world. But where that's led to is a place of, of extraordinary peace for me. And um, in an extraordinary amount of trust. I trust in God. I trust in divine providence. I trust in his plan. And, um, you know, I think there would be a problem if I, if I were anxious or scared or worried, or if I was hiding in my closet or, you know, um, just, that's just, it's not, it's just one of the things to look for. It's not of God. You know, I think this is one of the reasons that, um, that father asked me very early on when I, when I began to share the experiences with him, one of the first questions he asked me, is it affecting your life anyway? You know, are you still going to work? Are you still taking care of the family? Are you still, you know, washing the car and, you know, doing what you normally do? And, um, and the answer to that question was yes. I was doing everything that I normally do, but I, didn't, I just didn't know what I was experiencing. I knew they were happening, but I didn't know what to make of them. And so, you know, again, with what Father said, it's totally true. You know, I, I can vouch for that just in my own life and my own experience. Um, the experiences don't make anyone more special than anyone else. They're just graces given by God. As a matter of fact, I think they're given to those who actually need them more than most people. So that's just my take on it anyway. So with that being said, um, be careful about what you listen to. Be careful about what you read. Because again, I've warned you before and I'm going to warn you again. I would hate to see um, anyone and especially you know, the people that, that view this channel, the ones that the people that have been here for so long and have prayed for me, um, and I've been praying for you guys, to see somebody waste all of that time, you know, listening to stuff that's not edifying, that you're not learning from, and then, and then just to find out 
that, um, that it was fake, you know, or, or worse, you know, you send them money or something and find out it's fake. And so, um, again, I've, I warned a number of people about a number of people and these number of people are, they have fallen and, and it's going to continue to happen. And, uh, the, the best thing to do, you know, if you're interested in that kind of thing, if you're interested in eschatology, find a good scholar on eschatology, find someone that is, um, you know, taking it directly from scripture and, and applying it, you know, in that way. Um, and in a way that's not, uh, that doesn't deviate from the teaching of the church. And always keep in your mind, always understand that there are different ways of reading scripture. There are different senses of reading scripture, okay? And so they're not different interpretations, they're different senses. And so I've always said, and I'll say it again, think of the scriptures as um, in, in terms of depth rather than length, okay? So you, there, there are layers that can be peeled away in scripture uh, in which you can move into the, the allegorical sense or the mystical sense of, of reading scripture. You know, um, just, uh, it's just a caution, just to be fair warned, okay? That's the most important thing. So anyway, with that being said, hopefully um, we don't get in too much, uh, we don't have too many more of these guys kind of flip out and and lead anybody else astray, okay? Um, but, you know, I said it before, and, well, I shouldn't say that. I don't want to say I told you so, so I won't. Anyway, I'm going to move on to this margarita thing. And uh, I hope you guys, I don't know if you guys have ever tried this. I'll tell you one thing about margaritas, okay? Or, well, any kind of drink in general. Um, the alcohol is what um, dehydrates. And this is why, you know, if you have too much alcohol, you have a hangover, okay? Now, there's really no way to fix that because if you drink too much alcohol, you're just going to have a hangover. But for me, if I drink, if I drink like one margarita, I kind of, I don't really feel, you know, up to par the next day until I did this. So what I figured out was it's the sugar. It's the, it's the unnatural sugar that actually causes you to feel like kind of like poo-poo in the next morning, even if it's one or two margaritas the night before, right? But if you use fresh fruit, so this is, I use, you're gonna, first of all, you know what? You're gonna need one of these. This is, ugh, it's kind of heavy and they don't make them anymore, but I'll show it to you anyway. One of these, this is an old school juicer and I use it a lot. I juice a lot of vegetables and fruits, but what I do is I'll, is I'll take the fruits that I like, and I guess you could use any fruit you want to, like strawberries or, or whatever you want, whatever kind of margarita you want. I like to mix mine. So I got um, navel oranges. I have, people probably won't like this one very much, but Fuji apples. I have mango, and then I take a portion of pineapple, okay? So you take all of those and you juice it, and then you strain the juice, and the, this is the really cool thing about it. You strain the juice, and if you do enough of it, you can get a whole pitcher that will like last you the whole week, so you can like actually drink a, a glass of this juice every day, and it's really, really good for you. You'll start to feel, um, you'll feel better. You'll, you'll notice it within a week. Um, but anyways, you wanna juice all this, right? And then you strain it, you strain that, and then when you make the margarita, you're gonna put it into a blender, obviously with ice, and with tequila. Now, the more tequila you use, the stronger your margarita is going to be. So I do mine kind of different. I make a single margarita and then keep the pitcher of juice. So that way, if I ever, if I want to make another margarita, I can. I don't waste all the juice on a margarita because I don't drink a lot of margaritas. But the other thing you're going to want to use, you're going to want to use really, really good tequila. Okay? You don't want the cheap tequila because that's important. Um, the, the cheaper the tequila, the worse it's going to make you feel. And then last, what you wanna do is you take the juice, you take the, and then you put it in a blender, you add the tequila, you add the ice, okay? But here's the key. Um, uh, it's mineral water and it has, um, uh, what am I thinking, what's the word? Um, why can't I think of the word? Oh my gosh, I can't think of the word. Anyway. This one, this too. So you wanna you want to take about half a bottle of palm juice and you pour it in the blender and then you take the mineral water, 
Wait, it's not an antioxidants. It's, um, gosh, what's it called? Electrolytes. It has the electrolytes in it. So you take half a bottle of that and you pour in the electrolytes. Now, why, why is this important? The reason this is important is because it's the alcohol and the sugar that dehydrates. The antioxidants and the um, electrolytes in the mineral, mineral water will help counter that. Okay, I don't like real strong margaritas anyway, but if you do that, what it does is it counters it. So it keeps your body from dehydrating. And this is, the, it's, that's the whole reason, you know, you, you feel kind of slower in the morning after a few margaritas. It's because of the dehydration. So that fights against the dehydration. It kind of counters it. You can have a good margarita at night or with your friends or whatever, just having a family over, whatever it is going on. And then you can, that will counter the dehydration and you, you won't feel as uh, in the morning. So um, with the juice, what I do is I'll make a picture of it and I keep it in, I keep it in the fridge. So I have the juice all week long, okay? And it's actually really good. You can use it to make popsicles, but um, for the kids too. Also, um, use whatever kind of fruit you, you use or whatever kind you like. I, some people don't like the pineapple because it's too zesty. I find that it just gives it a little bit of punch. Um, but what I do is I'll take, I'll take the juice and I'll pour it into a cup, okay? If I'm gonna make a margarita, I'll pour it into a glass, okay? And then I'll take that glass and pour it into a, um, into a blender, throw in some ice, and then just like a quarter shot of tequila. Instead of like, if you were making a whole pitcher of margaritas, you're just making a cup. So like just even, you know, a quarter, just a little bit of tequila and you drop that in there and then you blend that up and you have one margarita and you also keep your juice. So that's, um, you have your juice for the week and you can still have a margarita. The salt on the top and the lime, totally way to go, okay? So there's the margarita mix. You guys can try it if you want to. I love them, you may not like it. Um, the last time I did it, I made it for I made it for my son, my oldest son and his wife, and they really liked it. So anyway, give it a shot. And um, the last thing I'm gonna share with you, this was a gift that was given to me, it's kind of cool. You guys know I like Star Wars. So I'm gonna show you this. This was, um, this was given, or you know, yeah, it was given to me, it was a gift. And I've had it for a while, but I wanted to show it to you. It's an, it's an absolute perfect replica of a lightsaber in one of the in one of the Star Wars movies, and it's made from airline aluminum, and it's perfect, it, symmetrically perfect. Everything is perfect on it, even the little red buttons, all of it. So, so it's kind of fun. Anyway, we might want to get some of these so that um, when the Empire tries to kill us, we can um, we can fight them. That'd be fun to have real lightsabers. I wish that were true. Actually, you know what I wish were true is that we had, I could just get in a, in a spaceship and fly away from here until, until everything happens and I'll come back and land in the period of peace and I'll think, of, you know, I'm special because I got a ship. Anyway, um, just try to make it a little fun. You guys, um, pay attention to what you're listening to. Really, really pray about what you read and about what you are looking into. Um, because there, there are, I, I've said it before, there's a lot, of, a lot of false steers out there. And there's a lot of people that, I'm not saying the people are bad, okay? Um, we know it can only come from one of three places. Uh, that's for you know, those in authority to decide where that is. But um, there are some others out there that are, there are some things wrong with and uh, I'm just giving you fair warning. That's all I want to do is give you fair warning, share the, uh, you know, the, um, I guess the experience that I have and, uh, you know, the, um, the advice that I've been given, things that I've learned, and then just going by the scriptures and, and using the gift of, uh, of discernment to be able to discern these things when you see contradictions or hear contradictions. So other than that, I just wanted to share the, um, that information with you and then kind of share the, 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 uh, the margarita because we're getting into summer now, so it'll be hot. People will want margaritas. Anyway, try it, but don't forget the palm juice, okay? Like half of, half of it. I don't know if you like it. They make different um, 
uh, flavors, okay? So try to do the palm juice, but make sure you do the electrolyte water because that's the most important thing. And then the other thing about the lightsaber, I don't know if you know this, but the blue ones, right, were the guardians. They were basically like the ones that went out and uh, they were like the knights. They were the armor, the, the, the fighters, okay? They're the ones that kind of kept the peace. The green lightsaber, okay, that can only come to you when you get wisdom. So then you get to sit on the council and you're like one of those cool guys. And you know, the green lightsaber is really, you know, that's the top of the line. But anyway, that's why mine's blue because I've never graduated to green. So there you go. Actually, I kind of see blue, a little bit of blue, a lot of fun. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the lightsaber and the margaritas. The most important thing is to remember is to um, please, you know, if you're still listening, to this stuff that's out there with, with all these seers and all these messages. Um, don't spend the majority of your time doing that because you're wasting your time. I can tell you right now that probably anywhere from 80 to 90% of them, you know, there's something wrong with um, in the ones that, that I've seen and heard, okay? So just, uh, in, it's only a matter of time before it fails and it will fail. And uh, so just pay attention to that. Please be observant and prayerful about doing that. And uh, I guess until next time, I will leave you with that thought and a new margarita mix. Hopefully you think it's heavenly. I do. It's not only that, you know what? When you get the margarita mix at the store, that's where you get the fake sugar stuff. But this stuff's actually good for you. So it's a fresh margarita. So. Get fresh fruit, use fresh fruit. It's actually good for you. A little bit of alcohol never hurt anybody. Um, and uh, just don't overdo it with the margarita. Otherwise, you might hurt yourself with the lightsaber. So anyway, I hope you guys have a great day. And um, I hope to talk to you again. Anyway, keep me in prayer because, well, I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> uh, keep me in prayer and I'll keep praying for you, okay? May God bless you. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. And may he grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.